this month, we had a U.S. government agency, who shall remain nameless, levy the largest fine against the largest crypto exchange in the world, of which it's questionable whether they had any jurisdiction over, but they still did it, forced the CEO to step down from his role. And this chart says, I, I don't care. I, I just don't care. And, uh, you know, maybe I need a new hashtag. Bitcoin doesn't care. It It is in a massive accumulation. Welcome to Unscripted Crypto. In this episode, we delve into a recent and highly controversial action by a U.S. government agency. They've imposed a record-breaking fine on the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange. This move, which many argue stretches beyond their jurisdiction, has led to the resignation of the exchange's CEO. But what's truly remarkable here is how Bitcoin, the epitome of digital resilience, remains undeterred, continuing its massive accumulation phase. This brings us to the question, does Bitcoin truly not care about these regulatory hurdles, or is this just the beginning of a new era in digital currency regulation? Before we explore further, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to stay updated with the latest in the crypto world. Let's dive deeper into this situation. We've talked about this. The first they ignore you, then they laugh at you. It's like a bunch of nerds, geeks, play, play with your magic internet money, whatever. Then it became a threat, and they're like, I right, we'll kill it. And they've tried, right? Multiple times. They've tilted at the windmill, and the windmill just smacked them down. Like, literally smacked them down. Like, all right, we can't kill it. All right, you know what? We're going to take control of it. And here's what you do. You, you go after the highest profile, <coughs> Stevie Cohen, <coughs> comes to mind in, in the hedge fund space and two billion dollars I mean I mean it, it just sit three year ban I mean just it's like I've heard this story before and you get a key figure to step aside so you can put your man or woman in the seat and then you have control you can't beat them join them that that's what's going on here this is like a, a hostile takeover. And it's not like a full takeover. It's not like, you know, Gary's going to sit in the chair and, and and pull the strings. But this is absolutely a, all right, you're too big to kill, but we don't like you. And and we want you to play by our rules. And you want, we want you to pay for our budget for the next couple of years. So that's what they're doing. And some would call it extortion or bribery. Others would call it cost of doing business. Uh, it's kind of like J.P. Morgan in jolly old England. Um, they have a subsidiary that basically spoofs the price of gold all day long, every day. And they make ish $20 billion a year. And every once in a while, they get a fine of a billion dollars. You can go back and read this in, in the newspaper, right? No one reads newspapers, but online you could find it. And when when they ask the guy, you know, are you gonna keep doing this? Or he's like, Are you joking? It's a cost of doing business, 5%. Of course, it's amazing insight. So on the Stevie Cohen case, it was more civil, I believe, not criminal. And you could settle it without admitting guilt. You got to say, I am not admitting guilt, but I'm paying $2.1 million uh, or $2.2 million, $2 billion, billion, billion. And I find this crazy that you can have a criminal, like, like literally criminal, I and but but it may work that way for rich people. Maybe it's not. Maybe the average person just doesn't understand that that is the way it works. The crypto landscape is constantly evolving, and recent events highlight this perfectly. We've seen the classic pattern: first they ignore you, then they laugh, and when they realize they can't destroy you, they attempt to control you. This seems to be the case with the high-profile actions against leading figures in the crypto industry. It's a tactic reminiscent of traditional finance, where regulatory bodies flex their muscles to establish control. But what's most intriguing here is the use of monetary settlements in cases that are ostensibly criminal. This practice isn't new. We've seen it in traditional finance, with major banks settling for fractions of their illicit gains. It raises important questions about fairness and justice in financial regulation. 
Is this a sign of the crypto industry maturing, or are we witnessing a power play by regulatory bodies to maintain control over a rapidly evolving digital economy? As we ponder this, it's crucial to remember the bigger picture of digital assets and their place in the global financial landscape. What people, I think, miss sometimes is just the amount of money out there that is in these little boxes, these rule boxes. And there's 30 trillion by Eric Balkunius's, uh I think I'm saying his last name right. Balkunis. Yeah, Balkunis, yep. Yeah. And, um, you know, 30 trillion, it's a big number, uh, that can't, at this point, buy Bitcoin directly, right? But they can, in many cases, not all, um, buy things like uh, MicroStrategy or or Coinbase because they're listed companies uh, as opposed to, you know, they like, you know, UBS won't let me buy GBTC, whatever. But when this ETF happens, that's going to be a dicey, dicey period because then it's like, well, I don't have to buy MicroStrategy, which is a questionable software business tacked on to a big honeypot of, of Bitcoin. And I don't have to pay a, a premium anymore for, for Coinbase. And I, I think Coinbase will do well because they're gonna, their business is going to skyrocket, right? Because they're going to do custody for for these ETFs and they're going to, you know, get ancillary benefit. And when the institutions really come, because yes, there's an institutional bid, but it's with this many people. And, and I actually have numbers to back it up because I'm still smiling and dialing and trying to get people to meet. It's crazy how many people in the institutional world are still stuck on zero, like literally zero. It's 80 plus percent of institutions. Now it's funny in the surveys, I think like 74% said, Oh, we have exposure. I'm like, well, kind of, kind of. And what they're saying is, well, we gave some money to this venture capitalist. And we think right. they have some exposure somewhere. Yeah. Okay, fine. But that's not you making a decision to buy a digital asset for all the right reasons, right? Reason to own digital assets is very simple. Let's just talk Bitcoin, and then we can go to the others. But Bitcoin is 0.0, .0 correlated to bonds and 0 0.15 correlated to stocks. Those are the two lowest correlations of any meaningful asset class, like high yield bonds, uh, hedge funds, private equity, international stocks. If you take anything with, you know, kind of half a, trillion dollars and up of, of value. You could find small things like, you know, stamps or coins that have even lower correlation. But but for a meaningful asset class, this is the, the least correlated of all of them. And so when you add it to a Markowitz framework, meaning, you know, when you take cash, riskiest asset you could ever own because you lose to inflation and you add bonds, which have more volatility, risk goes down. There's an estimated $30 trillion locked in traditional financial instruments that are yet to fully embrace Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. This is set to change with the introduction of Bitcoin ETFs, signaling a seismic shift in institutional investment. This shift isn't just about diversification, it's about recognizing Bitcoin's unique position as an asset class with minimal correlation to traditional stocks and bonds. Adding Bitcoin to a portfolio could significantly reduce overall risk and increase returns, a fact increasingly acknowledged by savvy investors. As we wrap up, think about the vast untapped potential of institutional money yet to enter the crypto market. What impact do you think this will have on the future of digital assets? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to Unscripted Crypto for more insightful content. Until next time, keep exploring the uncharted territories of the crypto world.